Okay. Hello again. Um, I am. Uh, my name is Rolf. Uh, I am from uh, Pet Planet, and uh, welcome to our second Petina uh, T dot caps, an opportunity for compression and injection molding. Um, I'm not your presenter. That would be Rory, uh, who, who will um, you who will who you who you see in uh, maybe a minute. Uh, I will only do a very short technical uh, introduction, uh, so you can get the most use out of the uh, webinar software. Um, and uh, to keep it very brief, uh, there's a full screen button in the upper right corner. Um, you can use that um, to maximize uh, the visible area for the videos and for the presentations. And uh, there's um, a type your message uh, box in the lower right corner where you can answer questions, which we will then moderate. And um, the best questions will be um, presented to the presenters and they will answer them hopefully. And uh, so we get a nice discussion going. And finally, uh, there's a slider, a gray slider um, between the black part on the left and the white part on the right. And you can use that um, again to maximize your screen estate for the presentations and for the videos in the left hand side. And um, that's basically it. And with that, I think it's um, 1 p.m. And I will um, go out and uh, wish you a, a happy uh, webinar and uh, hand over to uh, our moderator, Rory McCallion. Hi, uh, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. And we have several hundred people joining us from all over the world, and you're all very welcome. Uh, we've got an interesting topic for the second petinar of the year, which is about tethered caps. Uh, that is a subject that, that is moving up the agenda for commercial and for ecological and environmental reasons. And we have three outstanding presenters who are going to uh, go over some of the issues and share some ideas about uh, solutions and how to cope with it and what we should be looking for. We have David Chalmers from Coca-Cola Amatil in Sydney in Australia. We have Jacopo Bianconcini uh, from Sacme Imola. Imola is one of my favorite racetracks, I must say. And we have Andreas Brown, who is from Bericap, who are very well known for caps and closure systems. Now, uh, as Ralph was saying, we will be having questions. Now, we'll have a little bit of time for questions at the end of each presentation. I will ask you that in that particular part, you, you restrict your questions to what the presenter has been talking about. We will, at the end of the session, or uh, after all three presentations have been made, have about 15, 20 minutes or so for a broader discussion. David won't be with us because it's, it's uh, well past his bedtime in Sydney already, uh, and he will be going, he will be leaving earlier. But we'll still have sufficient number of people here to make for an animated discussion. Ah, there we are. Okay, right. Well, what I'm very happy to do is to introduce Andreas Brem. We will sort out the other problems late, later. Uh, Andreas is Group Technical Sales Director, Beverage and Food, with Barricap, who we know very well as, as uh, one of the world's leading uh, closure systems manufacturers. And yeah, uh, Andreas, I'm really looking forward to what you have to say. And I hope everything goes, goes okay. Thanks a lot, Rory, for the introduction. So welcome to everybody. Let me first of all say a few words to Barry Cap. So we currently have about uh, 3,000 uh, 650 employees worldwide. In 2019, we pr uh, produced uh, about uh, 86 billion closures, so which is quite a lot. We are active uh, at five continents uh, in more than 100 countries and have globally 24 production sites. So we believe we are more than, let's say, a converter. We are really a, a process companion. That means uh, if our clients have a challenge, uh, we try to help with our own product development, with our own internal mode making. We produce the caps. We help our customers with uh, the application 
and we provide a global technical service. So that means we really listen, we solve, and we accompany. Coming to the industry challenge, why do we talk about tethered caps is an industry challenge? So the European single-use plastic, so short the SUP directive, uh, came into force in July 2nd in 2019 with a very tight execution timeline of only five years. So that means now being in 2020, so the time is running and we have, let's say, two main fields, if you like it in these words, uh, which is the upper part showing here, which is the, the law part. That means uh, there is um, a timeline for the ZEN, which is providing the technical specifications, so the standardizations for tethered caps. Uh, with the timeline of um, announcing it, officially announcing it till December 2022. So, but we are also talking about the ratification into the national laws, amendment of certification for the standards and processes. And the other part, which is more the, let's say, the product and the technical part, we talk about closure developments based on defined specifications. We're talking about pilot tools, testing, approvals. So also secondary equipment development, manufacturing, many of technical and consumer testings, production tools, line trials, evaluations, approvals. So there is a quite a uh, few things to do with the market introduction. So I would not say it's a target, it's more a deadline of July 2024. So there is a lot of things to do. It's really for the whole industry, it's a challenge. Talking about the uh, SEN standardization draft, which is not uh, officially yet, uh, so but it's focusing on following of the technical specifications. So when talking about the strengths, so it's uh, talking about the tier of uh, resistance or separation force. It means the current definition uh, is about containers with uh, integrated neck finishes, uh, um, like a PET single use bottle. So then we talk about the tier of resistance of minimum 25 Newton in vertical and horizontal direction. And when talking about containers with neck finishes, uh, not integral with the container body, uh, like a beverage carton or pouches, then we talk about the uh, tier of resistance of minimum 12 Newton in vertical and horizontal direction. There are also other things in discussion about reliability. Uh, for the moment, it looks like uh, opening and reclosing of minimum 15 times could be a solution, so without breaking uh, off the tethers. But this is uh, still a big dis uh, discussion ongoing, not only in Zen, also in uh, consulting uh, groups like uh, or, or organizations like uh, the CT. Uh, I'm also involved uh, due to the German Dean, so there is uh, still quite a lot of discussions. Uh, we are talking about safety, so the closures also with the tethers have to pass all the established uh, beverage packaging performance tests like we know it today. When talking about the relevant uh, product categories, then uh, we can talk about uh, still water. So Berry Cap is offering solutions for still water with uh, press on, but also screw caps. In opinion of Berry Cap, uh, as soon as we talk about really, um, really premium waters, then Berry Cap is uh, recommending um, screw caps. And for sure, when talking about, uh, let's say, a still water starting with a nitro flash, so it means somehow there is an internal pressure, then we talk about um, screw caps. This is because of the um, uh, sealing performance of, um, uh, or possible sealing performance of screw caps versus um, press on or snap caps. That means, uh, with that sealing features of a screw caps, you can somehow cover small neck damages um, and provide a better sealing in general. And also when talking about safe venting, like for septically filled beverages uh, in case of fermentation or 
uh, uh, venting of inside pressure for carbonated beverages, then the screw cap is the right solution. Berry cap solutions. So Berry cap is offering uh, quite a lot of solutions. So let's start with the uh, hinged tether options for screw caps. You can see on the on the left side the swinger side, clipper side, hinger side, and uh, the clip under, which is under development. Um, but also other options uh, without a hinge. So tether options. Uh, called swing down, swing over, clip in, and also providing solutions, snap-on solutions like our snap cap or tour, which is uh, representative for uh, additional uh, sports cap solutions we are offering. To give you a better feeling about uh, berry cap tether solutions, I will show you a short video. Hopefully it works on your end. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so what are the features and benefits of the Berry Cap uh, Tethered Cap solutions? So we put really a focus on um, the functionality, uh, proof and compatibility, operations excellence, and uh, customer flexibility. So let's start with the functionality. All of our solutions have an intuitive opening and closing. We talk about the affirmed and defined open position. You will have a wide opening angle for a hassle-free drinking or a splash-free pouring. And for sure, all of our solutions are fit for Zen regulations. Proof and compatibility. Uh, this with all major neck finishes and uh, availability of samples for line trials uh, of all relevant neck finishes. When talking about operations excellence, then uh, in view of the bottlers, there is no change uh, to the necks necessary, no change to the filling equipment, no change to kappa, only adjustment of chuck. For converters, we use existing production equipment and we try as little as possible uh, to modify so um, that only small modifications are necessary for the existing equipment. And thanks to the philosophy that we are um, uh, bet on external slitting, there is a, a high output per square meter. So Berry Cap has uh, in-house mold making 
and that means um, tethered caps features will lead to massive mode replacements in the market during the next years and therefore berry cap mode building capacity has been built up to be prepared for the expected tool capacity bottleneck of the market. With this slide, I'm showing you um, on the left side how it looks like when uh, with injection molding a cavity is filled and the design is made for a, a slitting uh, or external slitted TE band compared to the right side where the tethers or the bands or the bridges of the TE bands are internally molded. And you can see that the external slitting allows a more homogeneous filling of the cavities. So why is this important? You can see that with a controlled uh, cavity filling, you can avoid a risk of short shots uh, and also avoid cold welded areas. That means on the right side, when you have seen um, how the melt goes through the cavities, and you see there are some areas where the mat is going or coming together, then you can create that cold welded areas. Also with the external slitting, uh, it allows smaller bridge sizes compared to molded bridges. So why is this such important or why is, makes this a difference in our opinion? When uh, you test your caps under, under lab conditions, you screw the caps only by hand to the preforms, to the bottles. So everything looks uh, quite easy and quite fine. But when you uh, really go to a official production filling line uh, with high speed, not everything uh, is really um, center. So the cappers to the bottles or the preforms. So you see, uh, there is a difference between a pure lab condition and the reality of a filling line. So Bericap is having um, uh, a lab capper, at least that we are uh, in a position to uh, do the tests with higher speed, to test off-center, to test uh, a case of uh, kind of a tilted uh, closure on the neck. And we have seen and also collected a lot of experience uh, why isn't, is it such important to really have a stable, let's say, TE band, a well-defined, that you really can provide a good quality? Talking about um, customer flexibility, so we provide tested and approved sets of product solutions to meet send regulation specifications, consumer ac uh, acceptance, production and filling process, requirements, ability, uh, availability of samples for consumer testing on uh, customer product, uh, for filling line trials, um, support with potentially necessary filling line modifications. So we also give that uh, technical support and synchronization with market introduction preparation. So what also means when having a look to the execution timeline, so we are in 2020 and uh, also this slide is showing one of the benefits having um, closure solutions with uh, external slitting of the TE bands as also this gives you uh, uh, additional flexibility. It means we are right here. So we have, um, let's say, current closures available on the market right now in uh, this year or next year um, brand owners, brands can uh, approve a new closure design. A new closure design is necessary uh, for many of the closures as you need a higher part of the TE band to apply somehow tethers, the connections. Um, but already this year or next year, the closures can be approved. So that closures can be tested in 2021. So market tests with several options, which all work with that higher TE band can be tested in, in uh, during the next year or end of this year. And it gives you the chance that you start your conversion of the filling line with the new closure design, but having still uh, a tethered option or a TE band 
which is known like uh, nowadays. So it means you simply have that um, single cut of the TE band. And whenever the customer wants to start really introducing the tethered caps into the market, then he simply can say, we want to switch the standard single slit to a tethered slit. The design is approved, the, the lines are tested. So it's just uh, another, let's say, working step in berry cap production. You're quite flexible, which is uh, not um, possible in the same way with the molded TE bands. You have the freedom to, to say, OK, we start right now. OK, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot for your attention. And if there are any questions, so just let us know. Thank you. Did, Andreas, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, I was asking, you were talking primarily about the EU regulations which are coming into place in 2024. Are similar regulations coming in elsewhere in the world? Uh, we believe yes. I mean, believe means uh, I cannot guarantee for this. Um, for me, uh, there will be markets uh, like uh, some states in the US, uh, which I believe they will follow. Uh, I could imagine that maybe some companies decide for also marketing or image reasons to follow uh, this um, European uh, direction. So I would say uh, yes. So maybe uh, many companies will focus, uh, which makes sense, uh, first to uh, Europe where it's really a, a law then, mm -hmm. um, but I think, yes, other, other regions will follow. Okay, that's great, thank you. We have a question from somebody called Bo, who says, looking at the production, he thanks you for your presentation, and looking at the production challenges of tethered caps and the title of this webinar, which are the two different technical approaches to differentiate injection molding versus compression molding, as in the webinar title, or more so, injection molding with external slitting versus internal molding. Is that clear? Is that question clear? Uh, I think so. If not, uh, please correct me. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, in opinion of uh, Bericap, it's not that uh, big difference of um, injection molding versus compression molding. Mm -hmm. I would say it's uh, more a topic of uh, external slitting versus uh, internal uh, molding of the TE bands or the TE bridges. So as when you follow that uh, trend of uh, the, the last 20 years, I would say it's towards the um, external slitting. And the reason in our opinion is simply that it uh, gives uh, more continuous uh, quality, uh, especially when talking about um, uh high speed filling uh so at the filling lines and not is everything is well adjusted or let's say it's a more challenging uh filling uh then i see some benefits in having uh external slitted bands versus uh, internal injected uh, te bands but in general when you say compression molding so also compression molding is focusing on uh, external slitting so I would say uh, in this regards, we are in line with, with that technology. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Bo followed up with another one. Uh, how far are you with production realization, with, with actually being into production? I think is what he means by that. Mm -hmm. So uh, a few weeks ago, we really started with a very uh, large production of uh, tethered caps. Uh, so also for testing reasons, so not just uh, lab conditions or pilot mold conditions. So we really are in a phase of uh, production area, production mold, production equipment. So and after the summer period, we are ready also uh, to provide uh, samples or caps in really big amounts. Okay, that's great. Um, yeah, so we, you're very well prepared. Now, uh, somebody called Nikos uh, Bo said thank you for the clarification. 
Uh, with the okay. TE band, does the preform need to be modified? And this is from somebody called Nikos. So I didn't uh, well, hear example, at the sorry, very beginning. Sorry. For example, PCO 1881 and 29-25 caps. You should be able to see the question. With the higher oh, TE band, does the preform need to be modified? No, not for that two versions. So for that, uh, both for 1881 as well as for uh, 29, 25 next. As an example, that uh, solutions I have shown with um, uh, clip aside and so on, so works really very well for that next size. And nothing has to be adjusted on the on the next side. Okay, so I think we're, uh, Giovanni just asked. Uh, the tethered cat will not require any change on the neck finish design. And I think that you have just actually said that is the case. Now, um, with all the requests coming in for new cat development, what is your current average production or creation time together with design piloting trial? So we're looking at uh, the sort of length of time that it's going to take to get from design to finished product. So I would say if you really start with pilot mode, with all the testings in between, so you can roughly say it's one year. So because of uh, when talking about the big production modes, so it's also uh, the, the building of the modes, all the testings in between. So I would say it's it's one year, but uh, this is already very challenging. So as we, as we now talk about, uh, we experience, so we have, uh, experience already with many uh, pilot modes we built so far it's it means it's we are not uh, showing only concepts uh, with 3d printed samples or so on so we built uh, many many pilot uh, cavities pilot modes so for sure this will shorten the development time but anyway you have to build let's say bigger pilot modes for initial testings and later on uh, you build a uh, big production modes so i would say it's it's uh, roughly minimum one year okay all right thank you for that uh somebody called peter says when talking about hinged closures uh, should is it only the chucks that need to be replaced or would any other modification be required on the filling line because of the hinge uh, uh good question so i would tend to say yes the chucks have to be adapted, it's not only because of the hinge. So there is no protrusion of uh, our hinges uh, with our solutions. Um, but anyway, um, when you design the caps, there are slight differences in, let's say, the outside diameters. And uh, it can be the case that uh, existing chucks are working for some of the solutions, but I would say as a tendency, Yes, the, the checks has to be adapted to the solutions. Okay, but it's not especially because of the, the hinges. Okay, that's fair enough. Now, I've got a question from Dominic, and I'm going to add a little bit to it. It says, in which direction is the market going at the moment, uh, in terms of the general focus? And uh, I was going to ask the, the general awareness of these, chain, of these new regulations coming in. Uh, are companies aware of this, uh, bottlers and converters? Or um, is it really early days? Are you finding that, that you're having to educate people? I mean, the, the brand owners and bottlers are uh, aware of the situation, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not so sure when uh, having uh, the timeline in mind. So 2024 or mid of 2024 is quite challenging. Yes. And for me, this means um, there is uh, many things to do to build the modes, to build the equipment and so on. And so the companies who decide to start earlier, for sure they will get the resources which are available. So starting from mode building uh, and so on. So um, it would be an issue if everyone would decide saying, okay, uh, one year uh, we can start a project and uh, we saw the testing so and again this one year is a quite challenging one um so do not wait too long for your decisions so as the time is really running and uh, therefore yes uh, companies are aware um they so first companies started so with testings with consumer testings and so on but uh, yeah it's not that we have too much time to lose 
Okay, we'll take a couple more before going back to David, uh, fingers crossed. Um, first of all, uh, this is a question that uh, yeah, I, had, I had lined up to ask. Is the tethered, does the tethered um, design have any implications in terms of the weight of the closure? It's Giovanni asking, is tethered design bringing any heavy weighting onto the closure? So is it adding weight? Uh, unfortunately, I have to answer yes. So mm -hmm. it's uh, simply for the reason that uh, you, let's say you need something in addition. So in addition means uh, you somehow have to connect your cap. Is it an over cap? Is it a lid? Uh, to the neck of the bottle. And uh, simply for that um, yeah, tether function or it's a hinge function, whatever you need, it's somehow something in addition uh if you would really challenge and say okay um create the same cap or design the same cap without having a tether in i would say most of the cases at least uh you could uh, slightly reduce um the weight of the caps so okay. for the moment we are in a in a in a position that when we design new caps so for sure the target uh is um yeah to keep the, the actual weight of a cap, or in best case, we we are able to reduce the weight of a, a cap. But it's uh, simply as we design new caps, you have new resins available, but also there is the, the challenge you have to connect. And so, okay. yeah, that's fine. So, so we got it. We, we got an environmentally uh, sensitive solution, which is to hold on to the caps and stop them enter, entering the, the waste stream. But it's going to have uh, an impact of weight and therefore on energy. And as you can see, Johan Dobas also asked something very similar. A uh, couple more questions to finish. Uh, is it necessary to use the folded TE band with tethered caps? All the caps in your video uh, had a folded band. And secondly, from Simon, uh, with a post mold slit solution, is it possible to retrofit existing caps to facilitate a tethered design? Uh, if, yeah, if you, is that okay? Can you address both those questions in one answer? Um, so, ah, is, is, is it necessary to use a folded TE band with tethered caps? It's, I would not say it's uh, necessary, but we see uh, uh, clearly uh, benefits for a folded TE bands, especially when uh, talking about um, um, uh, TE functionality, so means are you able to manipulate um, a TE band, so to, to unscrew the closure without breaking the bridges. So a folded TE band for sure helps you in this regards to be, let's say, more safe, not mm -hmm. to be uh, uh, that no one can manipulate it so easy. On the other hand, it also helps on the uh, filling lines uh, as we see um, a clear tendency that the uh, slit flex band um, provide or give you more safety at the filling line during the application. So um, it's the more safe and uh, with the higher quality solution during the application. Okay, uh, quick yes or no answer to this one, if you'd be so kind. This is from Simon. Uh, is it Essentially, is it necessary to, uh, or is it possible to retrofit existing uh, caps or existing cap lines? What do you mean with uh, retrofit? Uh, do you have to have completely new equipment, or can you retrofit the um, the, the molding? The, the uh, okay, okay. The for sure. With um, um, with many of the solutions, we try to use uh, existing equipment. Uh -huh. So as an example, if there is a, a cap which has currently um, a small height of the TE band, but let's say a lot of um, a height uh, where you grip the closure, so with the, the neural height, so it can be that we use a frame of the mold, we just mm -hmm. switch the, the parting line from the TE band upwards to the, let's say, thread end of the closure, inside the closure, that means we try to keep the overall height of the closure. We make the TE band a little bit higher. We slightly uh, reduce the height of the, the grip height of a closure. And then we can, let's say, use uh, uh, 
uh, parts of the existing equipment, but building uh, new cores. So that it means not completely new equipment in this case, but there are different cases. But for okay. sure we try to, to use existing equipment. Okay, that's great, Andreas. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, there is a question from somebody called Peter. Peter, I'm not going to take a question now. I would ask you to resubmit it at the end if you would be so kind, because it's a, it's going to be a more general type of question, and it may well be that you'll get an answer in one of the next two presentations. But so uh, that, that's a no for that. But now I hope that we can go to David Chalmers and uh, get David's presentation. Just a quick reminder: David is with CC, uh, is, is with Cozatola Amatil in the western suburbs of Sydney in Australia, and he is the operations manager, packaging services division. Over to you, David. Yeah, I'm four chance. So that's not me sharing. That's um, that's through Rolf. Rolf, okay. is that going to be as a PDF or as a PowerPoint? Okay. okay. Um, I take it um, he will have to drive it, or can I drive it from here? I can drive it. When you want to try, try and click it. Click okay. down the right hand side. Yep. So as I move the next slide for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. The next slide, slide two. two okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, it will be a bit clunky. Um, the PowerPoint presentation obviously had some moving parts to it. Um, but technology's got the better of us all, so we'll um, we'll run with that. Just a thumbs up, Rory. Is my sound coming through okay? Your sound is coming through fine, David. Perfect. So, okay, so um, thank you. Hi and welcome. Um, you're actually now over my back shoulder is Coca-Cola Emitals Packaging Services Division. Um, as Rory mentioned, located at Eastern Creek, Sydney, Australia. Um, firstly, thank you for the time allocated to showcase the great work around sustainable packaging by Coca-Cola Amatol and how we benefit by superior design and testing. Um, behind me, just outside these walls, there are five Husky high pet and five Husky high cap injection machines. There's also a large purpose-built, fully automated Ackland Sun assembly machine for our three-piece Mercury sports closure. All lines are serviced by AGVs or automatic guided vehicles. And my presentation showcases our current closure range and how they've been designed to meet ever-changing future requirements. I'll also give you a bottler's insight into the challenges around designing closures to meet our needs. And I'll finish off by showcasing our Cylon 38mm Mercury sports closure. So unfortunately, a couple of pictures have jumped in ahead of me, but that's okay, we'll, um, we'll go with it. So behind that little blackboard there is actually our current 2.1 gram CSD closure that was introduced back in 2012, replacing an 1810 two-piece SSD closure. Um, it gave us an immediate weight saving of roughly 33%. The new one-piece closure, and again, this was back in 2012, um, was, um, was, is molded out of one material, which is high-density polyethylene, um, and incorporates a bump and ball seal as its sealing mechanism. Um, it meets its pressure requirement of 4.5 GV, and it has a moulded bridge and moulded stretch band, as you can see there. And then I would have jumped into the whole side of, we've also looked at uh, tethering solutions, which is that's now obviously jumped in, you can see there. Um, unlike the European regulation for tethered closures, Australia currently has no legal requirement to enforce tethering. But that hasn't stopped us working with our closure design partner, UCL, and mould partner Z-Moulds on further offerings. The Coca-Cola Amatol, the consumer's experience comes first, and we would only introduce a tethered solution if that's what our consumers were wanting. So again, it's uh, unfortunately jumped well ahead of me, but you see there on the left-hand side is our 2.1 SSD closure. Um, now we've got a multitude of things we can do here. You see the top there, the red closure, which incorporates the tethered style band for the 1881 cap. Um, to achieve that in our current moulds, and for that closure here in Sydney, we have two Z moulds moulds. One's a 96 cavity, and the other being a 72 cavity mould. Um, after obviously uh, numerous testing and line trials that the other guys have mentioned as well, um, and once passing all packaging requirements, we're then looking and obviously designing with the Z moulds. It's 
basically just replacing the um, four Z slides um, being a component style mould. Um, those Z slides are easily interchanged um, and that would roughly be a 10% investment compared to, to actually purchasing a new mould. Um, from the 1881, we've also got designs around the 26-22 finish as everyone else is working on as well. Now again, we can keep the, the bulk, the hot runner and the, the bulk of the mould and obviously just replace the parts required to go to a 26-22 finish. And if required in the future, or again, if the consumer's preference was there, we'd also look at the, um, the tethered 26-22 version as well. In 2012, um, we're also best in class in the Coca-Cola system for our 1.8 gram 1881 steel water closure. Um, before I go into any more of that, um, the reason why we stuck with 1881 for water instead of then going for a 2925, 3025 or a 2622 three start. Um, in Australia, our blow fill lines are generally swing lines, meaning they'll run CSD or SSD products at one stage and then we'll convert over and they'll actually run a still water product on the same line. So it was easier for us to stick with the 1881 finish, hence why um, we went for a little bit heavier closure to the 1.8 gram. Again, single piece, high density polyethylene, um, bum seal and bore seal as a sealing mechanism. It can hold up to 3.2 GV. Um, as past all the TCCC packaging requirements, um, we currently have a Z mold 72 cavity mold and that cycle time is about three and a half seconds. Um, believe it or not, same for the 2.1 gram closures as well. And as you can see in the bottom picture just there, um, we do have tethered designs in the waiting if that's the decision moving forward. And there you can see as well, that slide's come up on your screen now. Sorry, it's a bit clunky. Um, we have our tethered design. Again, it's um, a replacement of the Z slides um, to incorporate that tethered function. And again, it's roughly a 10% investment compared to a, a, a new mold itself. And again, we are looking at 26, 22. It would be the single star finish. Um, it wouldn't be the, the lighter weight three star dedicated water finish. And again, that's just due to our, our swing lines. Uh, 2014, we introduced the 38 mil Cylon flat cap. Um, it's a three-start aseptic finish closure. Um, one material, high-density polyethylene, again, utilising the same similar bump seal and ball seal mechanisms. Um, again, weighing at 3.25 grams, passes all the Coca-Cola system packaging requirements as moulded bridges and a moulded stretch band, again. Uh, cycle time's roughly four and a half seconds. And in 2014, that gave us a weight saving compared to the the outgoing two-piece hot fill cap of around about 26%. Um, you see there, obviously, we have the designs underway for a tethered cap um, as well for 38. The clothes you see underneath, that is our 28 mil 1881 hot fill cap, single piece hot fill cap that we use in Indonesia. Um, again, if we decided to convert those to a tethered finish, it would just be a replacement of the Z slides. So each cavity has four Z slides um, on all of our moulds and we'd just be replacing that rather than investment or replacing to a new mould. So um, a bit about our warm fill technology. So back or pre-2012 when it was introduced, um, we had our product fill temperatures were equal to or greater than 85 degrees Celsius. It was a two-start hot fill bottle finish. Um, we had a four-piece berry cap sports closure that incorporated two different materials, which was polyprope and obviously the aluminium foil. Back then, our 600 mil Powerade bottle weighed in at 33 grams, and that was made of 100% virgin PET. Annual sports closure volumes for Amatool back then was roughly about the 80 million mark. In 2012, we converted our cranes uh, blow fill line to a warm fill line, giving product fill temperatures of around the 75 degree mark, utilising the three star aseptic bottle finish. Um, in 2012 and currently still now, there were back then two globally available mercury closures, uh, one with our friend here from Berry Cap, the other from Corvaglia. Um, both of those closures utilised two materials, high density polyethylene and a polyprope overcap. 
The uh, Powerade bottle has dropped down to 22 grams for that 600 mil, which is roughly a 30 odd percent weight saving. And we now manufacture that bottle out of 100% recycled PET material. Currently, we're the biggest user of the mercury closure in the system of roughly about 120 million units per annum. If you look at the warm fill compared to the hot fill process, so you see there, hot fill is filling at 85 degrees. There's no liquid nitrogen in the hot fill prior to capping. Um, back then, the overcap was placed after the cooling tunnel. Um, inversion was roughly seven seconds and cooling would happen one minute after that. Now that we've gone to the warm fill technology, we fill at 75 degrees as discussed. Um, on that lightweight Powerade bottle, we also liquid um, nitrogen dose just prior to capping. That basically pressurizes the bottle to roughly 12, 16 PSI or one bar in the old scheme. The overcap is already placed on when the cap's applied. Um, inversion time is 20 seconds lay down time and then um, cooling takes on post five minutes after that. So if we look at the outgoing closure compared to the, the, the silent closure, which we um, introduced in 2018, um, both Berry Capnor and Corbaglia actually achieved full Coca-Cola company packaging approval. Um, they could both handle the 75 degree product fill temperature, both obviously suited to the three-star aseptic finish. Uh, both of the caps of Corvaglia and the berry cap um, are designed with the two materials as discussed. Um, it's not great for our recycling stream, which is why we, we look to, to design it differently when we made the mercury, which I'll go into. Um, there was issues with the 75 degree product fill with the one bar pressure. Occasionally we're getting sliders released and overcaps blowing off on the line, causing the whole bottle to be rejected. Um, no issues with the non-nitro dose of so the vacuum bottles were fine. Um, and we did have issues in the cooling tunnel with some of the overcaps with a bit of water ingress. I can now say that our silo mercury um, meets the Coca-Cola company's packaging requirements, meets the fill point of 75 degrees. Obviously it's very suited thankfully to the three start aseptic bottle finish. All three materials, so your, your base, your slider and your overcap or all manufactured out of high density polyethylene, which is a big benefit to our recyclability and the sustainability of that cap. The 600 mil RPET bottle, as I stated before, is 22 gram um, and is now made out of 100% recycled PET. Um, we can withstand the one bar pressure at 75 degrees um, and the vacuum pressure, and we don't have an issue with any water ingress um, in the cooling tunnel itself. Now, unfortunately, this, <laughs> this slide looks a bit of a mess. Um, in the PowerPoint presentation, we have some wonderful AGVs zooming across the screen, which unfortunately this looks like a mess now, but I'll run through it as best I can. So that's basically a standard layout of what a, a factory would look like. Top left there, you'll see in a, an injection machine, which is making the slider part of the closure. Um, the next one down um, is making the overcap and the bottom machine is making the base of the closure. Um, generally, the closure would be picked up by, in our case, an AGV or forklift, and they'd be taken, each individual part would be taken to the warehouse to either be cured or to be stored. Then each individual bin, or however they're uh, manufactured, or bulk bin or a Gaylord, as it's called overseas, will then be brought back in, placed into the assembly machine. All three parts would be put together. Only after that, generally, will they be um, vision inspected put into a, a bulk bin or a small cardboard box and taken out for um, putting back into the warehouse. Now we really reinvented the wheel when we built the plant or added, added the machinery, which we're already seen here on site to the plant. And again, without the automation and with all the AGVs hanging around, it is a bit of a mess, so I apologize. But again, the layout, we have the, one of our original machines running the slider part of the closure. Um, the next machine down, one of our new high cap fours running the overcap and the bottom machine running the base. Now the top machine, the slider, the AGV can pick that moulded piece up and either take it to the warehouse or it can take it directly to the um, assembly machine. Both the overcap and base mould supply directly in line to the assembly machine, to their bunkers. Now each individual part it's singularized through either a waterfall system or a rotary hopper. 
Once it's singularized, we vision inspect using IMD Vista camera systems, each individual part. So all three components prior to getting assembled, get visually inspected. And what we're looking for is the critical parts of the closure that could stop that from creating a choke hazard, making it easy to remove, looking for short shots, broken bridges and things like that. We can either then, once they've been inspected, run them back to the warehouse or in line, we can actually run them, assemble the closures, put them into a bulk bin, AGB picks them up and out they go into the warehouse. Last slide, thankfully it doesn't have any AGVs running over there. You can see, um, and this was taken back in 2018, many of these photos, uh, back when we opened, when Rory came out to the plant, we opened the, um, or cut the ribbon for the Cylon project and Alison Watkins, our group MD, is in top left-hand corner there, presenting to the team. Most of the guys on the right -hand side of the, the guys that I have worked with me here run the plant. You can see our closure there in the middle with some um, RPEP beads. And top right is our 600 mil Coca-Cola 100% RPET CSD bottle. And hopefully you all heard me. It is quite late here, so um, apologies that it uh, didn't run smoothly, but hopefully you, all, you can all hear that. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. You, presentation. You definitely are in one of those, Rory. Um, oh, yeah, okay. perfectly. Uh, that, that was good. Thank you. Now, a few things uh, come up um, interestingly uh, from our point of view is if the Australian regulations are not requiring you to go to tethered caps, why did you take the decision to do so? Um, like everything in Amatol, um, we like to be the pioneers and we like to take mm. that big step. But again, um, because we're not being forced into it, it'll be a con consumer preference. Um, but it's not to say that it won't come to Australia. Currently, it isn't here. Um, mm -hmm. But if it does, we want to be ready with the designs, um, ready to click in and take advantage of that. Right. Okay. Now, the Cylon Mercury is um, all made of one material, which makes the uh, uh, recycling a great deal easier. Is there something similar in the thinking behind the tethered caps from your point of view? You know, you're looking at um, a heavier weight, so that means you're going to be using that much more material. Uh, but are you actually looking at the uh, looking at establishing a, a closed loop, a circular economy for uh, for caps and closures? We are, um, and working with Yale, and we're also looking at putting down our own RPEP facility here in Australia. Um, mm -hmm. That could then grow into um, recycled HDPE as well. Um, so if we're able to get those um, closures back, obviously in an RPEP plane you have you know, your sink float tank, so it is um, quite an easy material to be able to, to get back. Um, hence one of the reasons why we made the mercury closure out of, all, out of one material. Um, so to answer your question for circular economy, we're also doing some trials around R, H, or recycled HDPE and closures as well. Um, very early days, but again, um, just wanting to get on the front foot. Right. Okay, um, and you've, you've been congratulated on your presentation by Jan. Uh, Malady is asking if it's possible to get a copy of the presentation, and I think that we can confirm that, yes, you will be able to. Uh, I'm very happy about that. Mal uh, yes, Malady was asking. Jan, Jan likes it so much, he said the same thing twice. So that's, and it was a nice presentation. Now, um, right, okay. Now I've actually asked the questions that, that I need. Ah, we got, now, now they're flooding in. Uh, are you also working on a tethered version of your sports closure? If so, tethering of the body and the overcap is being asked by Nicholas. That is a difficult one. Um, definitely UCL are working on designs as we speak. Um, the other ones, they weren't an easier choice. They were definitely um, a lot easier than the Mercury. Um, believe it or not, I had no grey hair before we started the Mercury project. So to think of putting on a, um, a tethered version, look, it's definitely in the pipe work. Um, it, is a, it, it is a great closure and, and, it, and it performs quite well. I, I, again, I still have some nightmares around that. So jumping straight into tethering of that closure, definitely on the, on the cards, but not at the moment. 
Okay, all right. Um, okay, well, I think that uh, that's that's all, David. We've kept you much longer than we should have done, about an hour longer than we should have done. Thank you very much indeed for sparing the time. Excellent presentation, thoroughly enjoyed it. Give my regards to Bronwyn and everybody in the team, if you'd be so kind. She's actually listening to you, but I will do. Thank you for that, Rory, and thank you, everyone. Hi, Hi Bronwyn. <laughs> okay, that's great. Thank you. Thanks, David. Now, Jacopo, are we going to have another go at your presentation? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, and I can hear you a lot better. There's a great deal less echo than there was last time. Uh, okay, so I tried to change. So let me know if you, uh, with this connection, you can see uh, the screen uh, I am uh, sharing with you. Yeah. Can you? Uh, I can see, I can't see the detail. I'm getting a circle coming up at the moment. We'll just wait and see if um, the, um, uh, see if the, the detail comes through. Okay, if not, uh, we, we go back again uh, in the uh, we presentation. Are. We've got it. It's appeared. Do you, right. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So, um, let me know if uh, I can proceed forward uh, or at which stage I've been, you have been listening to me in uh, my you, previous intervention. Okay, you carry on. Uh, I think that you, you have the pointer under your control, so you carry on. Over to you, Jacopo. Thank you very much. Okay, can you see me? Can you see the slides going? Yes. You're okay, now at so, the lab to our the lab our tour. Oh, fantastic! So hopefully now you can see the video, uh -huh. and uh, again I, I will not stop uh, a lot on this. Uh, again, uh, we are a mold manufacturer, machine manufacturer, and the capsule design, uh -huh. and uh, so we have a, a provider of comprehensive uh, solutions uh, upstream and downstream uh, the whole uh, process because we also produce, uh, as you can see from the video, uh, injection machines for PET preforms and uh, uh, complete beverage lines from uh, blowing, filling, uh, and uh, the end of the line. So basically, uh, the lab is our core. We developed uh, over a thousand caps designs uh, since uh, 1998. So I will not uh, focus on this as uh, uh, we have been speaking on this before. Um, we, we have been through these slides. Uh, Ruari, stop me if something is not working because from my computer, everything is fine. So let me know if on the platform, something is not going properly. And uh, uh, okay, and so now uh, we can see hopefully also the video of a delta hinge 30, 37 millimeter cap. This, uh, this type of cap uh, is uh, slightly short, it's a 26 millimeter, it's pretty new in the market. And uh, the slitting patterns here as a fixed open position and it is quite stable. We have been speaking uh, before on this uh, and uh, we have different solutions uh, for existing uh, uh, caps designs uh, and the different solutions depends uh, on the type of cap and uh, the uh, customer requirements. Uh, we have been speaking before on the pros uh, of uh, these uh, slitting patterns. We have been deepening uh, on uh, the snap-on caps. Uh, this is the, the SACMI uh, solution uh, on uh, uh, snap-on. And uh, I don't know whether you before I have heard me, but I was mentioning that uh, for the uh, for the same beverage type, which is a flat water, not pressurized, which is the only beverage so far this cap uh, is suitable to, uh, there is a solution in the market, the screw uh, plastic cap, a flat top, uh, about 0 0.9 grams, uh, while uh, this, uh, so, I mean, the solution in France, uh, Snap-on, is 1.2 grams. So it means a 30% weight increase. Also, Andreas before has um, uh, highlighted the fact that uh, uh, even uh, with the tethered solution in the same cap designs, uh, there is uh, um, a little increase in weight. In terms of the same design, tethered solutions, uh, uh, slitting uh, is about 3 to 4%, the increase in weight in SACME solutions. Pro and cons uh, uh, of this uh, snap-on cap is uh, easy consumer acceptance, positive user experience, uh, and the convenience, because you use only one hand, on the other side, there is a high investment for cap manufacturers, uh, uh, for the performs, uh, producers, because you have to change the mold or part of the mold, at least the neck. And uh, you probably need to validate again uh, the, the package. And for sure, you have to validate again the, the package. Uh, I've been stopped here uh, during my previous test of the presentation. Um, 
the final goal of the EU, uh, when talking about uh, uh, single-use plastics regulation, at the end uh, is to move from single-use to uh, multiple-use. So in this, uh, um, there are in the market, uh, this is quite common, especially in Northern Europe and uh, Latin America, uh, the returnable in uh, PET bottles. Uh, and so uh, we have uh, basically lightweight uh, existing solutions we have on 1810, the one you can see here on the slide. Um, we are also working uh, on uh, uh, a lighter neck, uh, which is an 1881 on a returnable. It's not in the market yet. We are working on this. Um, if you say 1.5 grams uh, uh, in a bottle, you use 15 times. You uh, refill 15 times. In any case, the cap uh, every time has to be changed. So it is a cap saving on every uh, bottle usage. So we move uh, uh, from uh, the, the cap design, so the strategic approach on the test thread, on the impact of the test on, uh, on machines. So um, one of the topics uh, of the webinar was uh, if there is uh, an opportunity for compression molding on uh, this uh, test thread. Uh, and I will deepen this matter now uh, on compression molding. Later on, uh, I will touch the slitting part. On compression molding, uh, I would like to focus uh, on uh, um, consistency. Why? Because uh, consistency has been uh, um, quite an issue on the beverage, on the beverage lines, because they are very fast, um, very sophisticated, and uh, if there is a, a, a stoppage, a jam, uh, especially cap related, um, they are not uh, not very tolerated in uh, the bottling line, uh, working up to sixty thousand bottles uh, per hour. So uh, in compression molding, uh, consistency is uh, quite, uh, quite uh, uh, sorry, of a mark because uh, we have a weight consistency in, in effect that uh, the plastic always travel the same path. You can see from the video, if it is working, that uh, there is a nozzle on which the plastic pellet is coming and uh, the, dough, the weight uh, uh, of the nozzle, the quantity uh, of the plastic dose uh, is, uh, is controlled uh, by a, a metering pump uh, in the extruder. Then there is uh, a cutting tool, uh, sort of a hand, which plays exactly the, the dose into the mold. So the plastic makes uh, for every mold uh, always the same path. And this uh, brings a lot of uh, um, weight consistency. In terms of uh, dimension consistency, um, we have two touch the fact that the compression works at lower temperature compared to injection because there is a uh, no runners there are a large nozzle so in such case uh, uh, having a, um, a low temperature it means that uh, we have a, a cold the colder the part uh, low temperature cold part and this means less shrinkage less shrinkage in the final cap means less dimensional variation. And you have a test here on uh, the plug dimension of, uh, of a plastic uh, screw cap. So the standard deviation is 0 0.02 millimeter on uh, more than 400 um, cap samples we have taken. Um, on top of consistency, the final thing on compression I would like to point out is that uh, um, we, uh, we can allow uh, more materials with a different uh, uh, melt flow index, lower melt flow index. So it means that we can uh, use more viscous material. Uh, what does this mean? This has uh, two outcomes. One uh, is uh, less uh, stre stress cracking on, uh, on the caps, and the other is that uh, having a wider material to be used be in, in the case of a tethered solution, so quite uh, a more complex cap, uh, um, then we can allow different materials in order to find the one which perfectly suits that uh, cap design with the tethered uh, configuration. So uh, more weight consistency, um, higher dimension stability, and the less stress cracking, the all three are uh, gives at the end more efficiency in a, in a bottling line. And being a tethered cap, uh, um, more, a bit more delicate and more complex uh, compared to the standard one is, uh, is definitely a plus. Uh, there is another plus uh, on uh, compression molding. I hope uh, you can see the video here. Uh, the process is always under control. I mean, uh, you can see that uh, uh, is a, a linear continuous uh, output of the caps, uh, which are uh, aligned in an exiting belt in a 
and uh, that belt has placed in uh, in a uh, uh, in built-in machine camera made by our um, vision internal vision system automation division and uh, every cap has been inspected so it means that uh, only and uh, automatically rejected if it is not matching the parameter so this means that uh, uh, downstream in the line into the slitting uh, part uh, uh, of uh, the process where we make the tethered um, only the suitable caps arrives there it means uh, less jam and more uh, optimization of the process this uh, is uh, what uh, it is about uh, on uh, the compression um, intrinsic characteristics uh, which can uh, can be a plus uh, uh, in general but uh, uh, more on uh, on tether I would like to focus uh, on the final part of the presentation on the uh, slitting uh, uh, and uh, vision control line. So this uh, uh, is a it's a slitting machine. We have uh, thousands uh, of installations worldwide. So uh, we are uh, a provider of reliable solutions, uh, solutions like uh, the market uh, is uh, demonstrating and uh, is, is a part uh, of the process because uh, in compression uh, we tend always to have uh, the slitting process even if uh, we have not tethered the designs. Uh. So basically how it works, it works that there are uh, um, two parts, uh, a fixed and a mobile part. Um, the mobile part are the spindle, each spindle has uh, a servo motor which rotates the cap as you can see here in the video against a fixed tool which is the blade. The blade which gives the fix the uh, slitting uh, configuration and the tethered configuration in case of tethered caps and uh, the blade uh, is a uh, uh, asset to control the temperature warmed up in order to have uh, a better cut and uh, well these uh, are, are quite flexible machines because they can allow dimension from 18 to 55 millimeter in dimension in the diameter in height uh, is uh, from 10 to uh, 23 millimeter. Uh, it's quite quick to change the tools as uh, you have seen from the video. And this allow a very quick changeover, even if we have to change from a standard cap to uh, a, a tethered one or from one tethered type to another tethered type given the same, uh, the same design. I will go forward. And uh, in uh, this section, we see a vision system right after the slitting machines. Uh, in that solutions, we have uh, three stations. Uh, the first station controls the inner part of the cap, the plug seal and the thread, uh, and then can control the formations, voids, uh, contamination and black spots. The second one here, you see, uh, basically you control the band, uh, the temper evidence band in terms of uh, incompleteness uh, of the band or uh, color variations. And uh, the third uh, stations uh, of vision control uh, basically is made of four cameras placed uh, each uh, uh, one from the other one at 90 degrees. Uh, and this uh, allows to, with, uh, with an interpolation, uh, so basically with all 3D algorithms uh, to, have, to unroll, uh, to unfold the band and be able to inspect uh, in terms of, again, uh, scratches, uh, uh, contaminations, uh, black spots, uh, even if there are uh, broken bridges. The final machine uh, of the line uh, is uh, uh, a quite new machine, so is a pull force machine. Uh, what, what is the, um, the scope of these machines? Is to inspect the temper evidence band cut, which is quite important in the tethered configurations, and measuring the breaking force. It is a um, destructive test, and in fact, uh, it is made only on, uh, on samples, not uh, on every cap. So, uh, as you can see here, the, the cap uh, is a sort of pull uh, uh, machine and uh, breaks the bridges and measures the force, and can do on vertical, but also horizontal, on the band and also on the tethered, uh, for the tethered configuration. So, on, uh, on, the, on the part of the cap, uh, which makes the band and the cap attach to each other. Uh, there is an inspection system inbuilt with the machines. Uh, and uh, as you can see from here, can uh, really control the cut uh, and uh, the bridges. This is very important because uh, we can sort of have uh, a, a closed loop uh, with uh, the slitting and folding machines. Also because, you know, uh, being an inline process, every cap from which a station is coming from 
and uh, there is this sort of a closed loop so uh, you can automatically uh, control parameters in order to be back on track uh, in quality for instance you can act uh, automatically on uh, the temperature of uh, of the blade and uh, according to the measure you have uh, on the pull force uh, machines as you can see from here and in this case uh, you are uh, back on track uh, soon without uh, uh, rejections so this uh, this is everything uh, from uh, my side i hope uh, and i finish the uh, presentations so i do really hope you have been able to listen to me I don't know, Ruari, if I've been clear now with, uh, with the voice and with the video. And uh, thanks for listening. Yes, you both. Thank you very much indeed. That was much better. We were able to hear you. And thanks for taking the time to come back and uh, sort out that presentation. It was very interesting. We've got a couple of interesting questions that have just popped up. Uh, somebody called Dominic is saying, what about recycling? Uh, upside or downcycling will come with these solutions. What is the estimation on the market, uh, on the marketplace here for this question? Uh, I think what, what is um, it, it was very much a, another question that, that I had lined up, um, following on from what we were just saying with uh, David in Australia, uh, building the closed loop um, manufacturing, the you know circular manufacturing. Do we have the infrastructure in place to actually collect? Um, the, the, the caps themselves, all this effort is going in there to make sure that they don't get tossed into the waste stream. Have we got the infrastructure to collect and recycle and reuse um, the caps that we're no longer throwing away? Uh, it's uh, for me or uh, for Andreas or both? That's for you, That's okay. for you particularly. No, but SAC is very good at caps enclosures, so this is the sort of thing, this is the sort of pulse that you would have your finger on, I think. <laughs> Okay, so um, I have quite uh, quite few data, and uh, basically the um, uh, the collection rate. Uh, let's talk about bottles. The collection rate of bottles uh, in, uh, for instance, in US uh, uh, is uh, I think around thirty. The collection of plastic is around thirty percent, including the bottles. In Europe, uh, is a five is fifty percent on average, and we have a huge variation from north uh, to south, uh, from Germany. Uh, to, to northern countries, we are uh, over 90% and in other places far less. It is interesting to note, uh, and uh, this is the data came uh, from, uh, from a conference, I think from Coke, uh, from Coca-Cola, that uh, of all the bottles collected on beaches, on the streets, basically on uh, landfill, in 90% of the cases, the cap is already attached to the bottle. And also, uh, there is an interesting uh, number, not number, the SUP regulation states that uh, within uh, a certain uh, year, I don't remember if it is uh, 2029 or 2030, uh, but 90% of the bottle has to be collected. So you have 90% of the bottle collected and uh, on statistic, 90% of the caps on the bottle already. The, the good thing on this, uh, is that the tethered uh, solutions will allow all the caps to be attached to the bottle in any case. Uh, and uh, I'm talking about Europe, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully in the future this will be uh, worldwide because other countries will follow. Yeah. The interesting thing is that in uh, uh, the moment the bottle arrives in the recycling stations, uh, the structure, and then this I came back to the question, is that, uh, and correct me, Andreas, uh, if you if you you have different uh, uh, data, is that uh, when the bottle comes in, then uh, the, the basically is uh, um, granulated in small parts. Uh, and because of the different weight uh, of the HDPE and, and the PET, uh, this tends to different levels. One goes down and one stays uh, on the surface. And in that case, it's quite easy to divide the two streams on PET and uh, HDPE so uh, to be able to uh, divide uh, the PT from the other plastic in order to be again uh, reused in uh, on a food or uh, basically in, uh, on the same uh, type of usage that has been before. Yeah, so it's interesting that you said that that the that the bottles are there. So people are actually t making the effort to reattach the bottle to their waist, uh, reattach the cap to their waste bottle before they then toss it away. Uh, th this is in Europe, the data I, I got. Uh, it's about yeah. 90%. Yeah, 
you, you, would have, you would have thought that if... But we are talking, uh, we are talking on, I mean, every year are produced uh, uh, around uh, 500 uh, um, billion of uh, PT bottle and caps, mostly for beverage, for beverages, yeah. 450 billion. So even if 10% of 450 billion is 45 billion, so yeah. which is a still a huge, huge number. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, understood. But it is just interesting that people who then toss the bottle away take the time to put the cotton cap back on. How bizarre is that? You know, just another few steps down the road and they can put it in a litter bin. But there you go. All right, um, Oscar uh, is asking, can you make a 180 degree hinge with slitted tethered caps? Does that I make mean, sense? Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, we are working <laughs> on that. So far, we are less than that. I think uh, it's 140, 120 degrees, the, the results we have been achieved so far. And you can see also from, uh, from the video before. So 180 degrees uh, is, uh, is possible with, uh, with the snap-on cap, uh, for instance. Right. Okay. And, uh, uh, so just to, to jump in, uh, I would say it's, it's also possible with uh, the slitted solutions. So we see with some of our solutions that it's possible uh, 170 to 180 degrees. So, mm. so it's yeah, it's possible. Possible. yeah, okay. Um, right, I, I think we can just sort of smoothly move into the more general Q and A's. Uh, yeah, I suppose if you're happy with that. There is one more question uh, that is about injection and compression molding processes. Um, with the tethered uh, caps coming up, are there newer requirements for the plastic raw materials that will be in the caps? That, that means, do, do you, are you going to have to change the specifications of the raw materials going into the uh, into tethered caps? To to uh, my to our experience, uh, for in this very moment, uh, the answer is no. We are using uh, the standard materials, uh, and uh, we are having. Uh, Quite of acceptable results, and uh, definitely we are working also with the material producers in order uh, to to fine tune uh, and to have uh, uh, a dedicated better material in case. But uh, um, so far uh, is uh, is not uh, let's say uh, a major uh, a major issue. Okay, right, Andreas, would you concur? Would yeah, you agree? I would agree. I, I mean, it depends on the solutions, and there are different solutions available. For once, we see it's. Uh, we can use existing resins for other ones we see uh, if there is a, let's say a improvement in terms of some of the resin features uh, then it's, it's good i mean the tethers is something additional you have to take care of this one and uh, maybe the balance between the rigidity of a closure and the flexibility of a te band for sure you have to find a good balance so right that's fair enough. Now, um, we've talked about uh, awareness of the bottlers and the, and the converters of, of the regulations that are upcoming. But what about consumer acceptance? Uh, have, have we got to the stage of testing tethered t caps on consumers or testing them in the marketplace to find out how acceptable they are? Um. We have, uh, um, in Italy, there is a, a bottler, San Benedetto, which is our client. So they have um, a bunch of our uh, machines uh, in a house, so they are uh, caps auto producers. Uh, and uh, they have uh, already in the market in Italy um, a tethered solutions, uh, which is called uh, um, Twist and Lock, something like this. Uh, is their own design, so they develop this on uh, our uh, slitting machines and compression machines. Uh, and uh, they are doing. Uh, they are on the market, so they are doing uh, a, a market test on this. I think is a uh, is something that uh, there is a learning curve. So mm. the quicker the learning curve, the better. <laughs> and uh, I believe it is just a matter of time, and not a long time that consumer get used to this. Okay. Yeah, there is a. Yeah. Would you agree, Andreas? Andreas, uh, I would agree. I I mean, if uh, if you are aware of the story of. Uh, how this uh, topic around tethered cap started. So it's about the closure, which is already in the market. Uh, it's a snap-on flip-top closure. Uh, where one guy was seeing that uh, solution saying, oh, uh, it's already available on the market. Uh, I would tend to say there was no idea about the difference of uh, 
a still water product and a pressurized uh, product. So it was simply saying, ah, uh, it works. So not having an idea what it means for screw caps or pressurized uh, products. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's there are some solutions already available, uh, maybe mainly for still products, for still water products. Um, but yeah, so also this product started not quite well, I would say, but you have seen over time, there is more and more acceptance for this ones. Okay. So um, 2024 is when it has to be uh, introduced. Uh, are we going, when are we going to see uh, volume production in the marketplace? How, how much longer before then? Uh, say again, uh, Rwari, sorry. I didn't we, we have to have tethered caps for single use plastic in, by 2024. Yes. Uh, that's, that's the last minute. People aren't going to leave it to the last minute, I take it. So when do you expect that, is, that we are going to see tethered caps in volume production in the market? As, uh, as said in Italy, there are, uh, there are already in, uh, in the market, uh, a, with the, probably the, one of the bigger uh, bottlers in Italy. So you, you commonly see this uh, on supermarkets. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I expect that, uh, yeah, since uh, probably next year, uh, uh, we start to see again a ramp up curve uh, and also on, uh, on producers. Uh, and uh, it is to be remembered that uh, this is a European regulation. Mm -hmm. But in case uh, you produce uh, somewhere else in the world, take the Fiji water, which is, you know, the top brand, uh, high level mm -hmm. famous water. If anyone external of Europe wants to import their product in Europe, they have, they are subjected to the EU regulation. So even uh, abroad, uh, if they wish to import to Europe, there is uh, uh, the need also to be uh, a tethered solution. And that uh, I expect that even outside Europe, uh, they start to, to implement this thing. I, if I remember well, this uh, started a few years ago in California, that was mm -hmm. supposed to be uh, a rule on tethered. And then uh, and the fact also that having here in this webinar a worldwide uh, audience, it means that uh, it is a hot topic everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so that means that if the UK wishes to export to Europe, we're going to have to comply with <laughs> regulations. <laughs> yes. uh, Wes, uh, what, what's what's your perspective on uh, on this? Uh, when do you expect to see the tether caps in volume production? Um, I would say I'm uh, in line with uh, Jacopo, so I would have said uh, maybe uh, 2022. Uh -huh. So because of I imagine that maybe smaller projects um, uh, will start maybe next year. But the, the, the really big, big uh, volumes and projects, uh, I estimate they will start in, in 2022. And it always dis depends on, let's say, the volumes of a company, of a brand. Um, does it make sense? Do you start in, in one area or will you have one area where you maybe have two solutions in the market? So I don't think so. And therefore, it uh, a little bit depends always on this one. But area by area or product by product, so it will latest start in 2022. Okay. Is that, is, are you aware of any companies that are actually making this uh, a brand virtue? Uh, you know, in the way that Ecover, for example, have uh, made a brand virtue of the fact that the recycled pet that they use um, is actually a bit grey. Uh, they make it a brand feature. Is anybody, is anybody that you're aware of actually making a brand feature of using tethered caps as yet? I, yes, I believe so. Uh, again, uh, you're, you're before, the example before, and uh, in Italy, uh, on San Benedetto, you see uh, quite commonly an advert uh, on TV uh, on the fact that uh, they are already anticipating the regulation. They have a twisted cap, uh, so a friend of the environment, uh, mm -hmm. uh, closing the loop, uh, and, uh, and this uh, very important uh, uh, metals on uh, on uh, the single-use plastic regulation and uh, to be, um, let's say, friends of the environment. So yes, yeah. they are definitely a, a matter of. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, now, um, asking the the audience, are there any other questions that uh, you wish to push uh, put to the panel to uh, Jacopo or to Andreas? David's obviously not here. No point in putting any questions to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's why I have these cards here. 
All right, it doesn't look as if there is anything else coming in. So gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your time. And audience, thank you for your time and for your patience. Uh, Yashipo, thank you for your time, your patience and your resourcefulness in finding a, a means of getting your presentation to the screen. I hope everybody, oh, hang on, hang on. We've got a couple of, that have just appeared. Uh, right, okay, essentially saying thank you very much. Uh, interesting presentations despite the technical difficulties. Thank you both for your time. Thank you to the audience for your attendance. And thank you, David. I see that you're still here. Uh, and we look forward to seeing everybody again soon. Bye-bye now. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you.